Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at your questions and comments from part one of the Temples of Ancient Egypt. Before we begin, just a reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. So don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. Mythology tells us one thing, while history tells us another. Moving right along, our first question is from Rodrigo. He wants to know why the Egyptians were so fascinated with death. Rodrigo, excellent question. This is a common belief that the Egyptians were so preoccupied with death. However, I am not so sure that I agree with this premise. I think the Egyptians were seeking everlasting life. I pose that the Egyptians believed that death was the passing from one existence to another. I believe that this is why they wanted to take most of their belongings needed for the next life. Anyway, Rodrigo, this is a topic that I am sure we could discuss endlessly. Let's see, our next question uh, is from Lucian. Lucian goes on to say that everything that the Egyptians did was on a grand scale. To some degree, this is how they dominated other cultures. Lucian, I tend to agree with you. Imagine the sense of awe when foreign dignitaries first entered the pharaoh's palace in Memphis. The grandeur and opulence must have been intimidating to most, even to the point of seeing the Egyptians as the superior people. Next we have a question from Rachel. She wants to know if I believe that the great temples were built with slave labor. Rachel, over the years I have come to change my beliefs on this subject. These days, I believe that the Egyptians were well-versed in mathematics and skilled architects and engineers. I also believe that the workers were skilled at their profession, and for these reasons, the Egyptians were able to build incredible temples and monuments that have surpassed the ravages of time and without the use of slave labor. Next, we have a very interesting question from Tricia. She asks, how did the Egyptians light the inner chambers of these mortuary temples since they had burrowed deep into the side of a mountain? Trisha, lots of conjecture on this one. I am from the school of thought that they used polished bronze mirrors to illuminate the chambers with enough light for the artist to paint the reliefs on the walls of the inner sanctum. Let's press on. Dina wants to know if it is true that Seti the first did not live long enough to see the completion of his temple. Dina, you are quite correct. It is believed that his son, Ramesses II, completed the mortuary temple in honor of his father. Next we hear from Jack. Jack goes on to say that the temple of Abu Simbo is most impressive. It is so much larger, imposing, and grandiose than he had expected. Ramesses the Great definitely had a larger-than-life image of himself. In the 1960s, when they moved the temple due to the building of the dam and the lake, that in itself was a modern-day engineering miracle. Jack, so right you are. Ramesses definitely saw himself as Egypt's greatest king. He believed that both he and Egypt that were one in the same. Next, we have another comment. This one is from Megan. She goes on to say that the temples of ancient Egypt are colossal structures. It is difficult to fathom how they were able to build such structures and have them still standing thousands of years later. Meg and I wholeheartedly agree. These temples are astounding and it boggles the mind that back in antiquity, the Egyptians took on such colossal feats and were successful. And as you mentioned, they are still standing today. Our next comment is from Todd. He was surprised by the pictures of Hatshepsut's mortuary temple. He goes on to say that he was amazed by such men as Senenmut, who designed and built such massive temples and carved them out of rock. Is it true that he was inspired by another structure? Yes, Todd, you are absolutely correct. Hatshepsut's mortuary temple was inspired by Menemhotep II's mortuary temple. We have time for one last question. This one is from Yelena. She wants to know if Senenmut and Hapshetsu were secretly married. 
Yelena, there is much speculation about the relationship between these two. Some archaeologists believe that Senenmut was actually gay, and Hatshepsut was actually a man. However, many archaeologists do in fact believe that Senenmut and Queen Hatshepsut were either lovers or married. I believe this to be true. After all, they are buried together in Hatshepsut's temple, Deir el-Bahiri. I would also add that I believe that Hatshepsut was a woman. This brings us to the end of part two of the temples of ancient Egypt. As a reminder, we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. If you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe to our channel. This really is the best way to help our channel grow. Thank you for joining us for another adventure of Traveler's Tales. Traveler's Tales will return with the Pyramids of Ancient Egypt. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore history, Cartistos.